Hey guys. Hope you've been well. We are here <laughs> in front of Ashley's <laughs> RAV4. Uh, this is Ashley, you've seen her on my channel, but she doesn't like being in videos, so she's just gonna be in a small part of this video, giving you the rundown. But I have cool vehicles and we got Ashley this RAV and she was like, can we make my RAV cooler? So this is what we came up with. So this is her RAV. Ashley, tell us a little bit about it. So this is my 2019 Toyota RAV4. Do you know the color? It's in Lunar Rock. Do you know the model? XLE. And it is all-wheel drive. Yep. And we've done some modifications. So let's start down below. So we've got these Toyo Open Country A AT3s. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the wheels are 1552 Traverse. MX. MX. Very nice. <laughs> they're, they're nice. <laughs> they are in the uh, graphite color, I believe, which actually, interestingly enough, it's not pure black but it does very closely match all of the gray accents. So that's kind of a nice little touch. All right, coming around front, we added some lights as well. Down here, we have the KC Highlights Flex Array. And this is a 20 inch light bar. I'll get into a little more details and specs on all this stuff and kind of why we went with everything a little later. We're just knocking out the brief overview with Ashley real quick. Then we have some more KC Flex. Do you know what these are called when they're mounted like that? Ditch lights. Oh, nice. <laughs> and these are on uh, LP Adventure ditch or hood light brackets and I actually really like those. All right, Ashley, why don't you go around and pop the hood here. We'll show you what these are controlled by. First time using this, it's a trigger controller, wireless accessory controller, and it's called the 4 Plus. And I'll just show you it real quick, but then I'll, I'll talk a little more about it in detail in a second. So it is right up here. I'll go a little bit into the wiring and how easy it is and how unique it is here in a second. And what's the coolest part about that controller? That is controlled by my phone. Yeah, so we'll show you that. This has both a wireless controller so you don't have to go through your firewall and you can hook it up to your phone and you can do strobe and adjust the brightness and all that kind of stuff through your phone app. So then up top here, this is a... I know this one. Oh, you know this one. I know this one, it's a Prinsu rack. It is a Prinsu rack. So this is kind of a modular rack system. And we only put the three bars just to keep it lightweight. We may add more. You can kind of add and remove and move them back and forth but Ashley wanted the maximum view out of the moon roof. So we only put one up there. And that kind of completes the look really nicely, I think. Oh, when we first oh, got yeah. it, we Plasti dipped the emblems. So it is really dirty back here. Thank you, Colorado. Plasti dipped these babies. Thanks, I hope you enjoyed hearing the details about my RAV4. I'm gonna go inside and warm up while Mike tells you about the rest. Goodbye. Bye. All right, so that's Ashley's RAV4. She was just like, I don't care what you do, I just want it to look cool. So I figured out what was available for the RAV and all of these things are pretty much brand new. The Toyo AT3s just came out. The 1552 Traverse MX just came out. The RAV roof rack, Prince roof rack just came out. The KC lights have been out for a while and I believe the uh, ditch brackets uh, have been out for a while as well. But pretty much everything else is very new on this baby. So I'll dive in a little deeper. So these Toyo tires are brand new. They're kind of advertised for light truck and CUV. Uh, so this is a CUV or a compact utility vehicle or a small SUV. 
So these have a mountain snowflake rating, which is good for where we live. A little bit aggressive. Ashley does like to go hiking and stuff, so getting a little more meaty tire would help her get to the trails that she goes to sometimes, but she doesn't really do any serious off-roading or anything like that. They are in 245 65 r 17 which according to the forums are the biggest size you can fit on here with no lift. We don't plan on lifting it because this is Ashley's daily driver and we still want to keep it nice to drive. She doesn't really like getting up into my lifted vehicles all that much and we don't care about getting much bigger tires on here because these RAVs are already pretty slow in my opinion. These are the Traverse MX. These have bolt patterns in kind of your popular Subaru, Outback, RAV4, those kind of things, sizes. So you can check them out. Again, this is in graphite, so not a true black, more of like kind of a charcoal gray, which does match all the gray trim and stuff pretty nicely. And I think they just look nice. We got the ditch lights out here. So these are the KC Flex single pods and got these in spread. So you can see they are outside. Ashley really likes my ditch lights illuminating the sides of the road and stuff. So while she's not going to be using it for trail use as much, we do live out in the mountains on back roads. So the additional light is very nice, but those honestly won't get used as much as the light bar down low here. So down here we have the KC Flex Array, which is just a bunch of these little pods like the ditch lights, but all strung together with a single wire. So they're all controlled as one contiguous unit. Uh, fits down in here really nice into this lower grill area. You see it was like this all the way across. I just got some tin snips and those things cut very easily. That's a permanent modification. Unfortunately, that grill area isn't just removable in and of itself. Otherwise, I probably would have just taken the whole thing out to leave that piece intact, but cut it out. So we want to mount this in here down low. It kind of fits nicely in the spot, but it sticks out. So I don't want this as the thing that protrudes the most out the front because Ashley pulls a little too close to a building or something. She'll smush this instead of hitting the little bumpers. So even though Ashley doesn't want to do it, what we're going to do is cut this grill out so we can mount this a little bit further back in here. Uh, the radiators behind here, we usually don't want to block too much airflow, but the bulk of the airflow is going through here. And this is actually still going to allow quite a bit of airflow above and below it. So we should be fine. Sneep, sneep. Oh yeah. Nice work. <laughs> now, I can't recommend that you do this yourself but we're doing it. So whether or not you want to do it, that's all up to you. But if I were to suggest, I would say, don't do it. How's it feel? Not great. It's like a buck tooth. Or it's like a hockey player now. Missing those teeth. Slide that light bar in and see how it looks. Okay. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. While it fits in here very nice, the install was a little bit of a pain. Uh, you do have to get in under here and remove all of that kind of undercarriage crap in order to get the bolts in. And this bracket doesn't quite fit up, so I had to trim a little bit up here as well. But overall, pretty easy install. And I like lights, especially light bars, down low. So these are spot configuration, nice and low. So even lower than the fog lights, which means they'll cut through fog even better. And especially in the fog and the rain and the snow, when you have light bars up top, it's just really hard to see. So light bars down low kind of get under all of that uh, dust and everything and make for a much better lighting experience in my opinion. We do have the amber covers for these, but Ashley likes how they look without the amber covers. So we'll try them out kind of and see 
what she likes better in the end. But that's the lighting setup we got going on. So the wiring for the lights is done through the trigger controller. This is the 4 Plus. I've never used this unit, but saw it and thought it was really cool. So the kind of unique thing about this system is it has all the relays in and all the kind of pre-out pigtails so you can just wire it in super easy. But the thing that's unique about it is that you don't have to go through your firewall. The controller is wireless, so it's battery powered, so you don't have to run any wires through here, find it, do all that kind of crap. You just have the wireless controller, which I'll grab in a second, or you can control it from your phone. Or you can control it right here. So with the push of that button, these lights turned on. Very bright, very nice. And then there are kind of like status LEDs on there relays built in so you don't have to wire up separate inline relays or inline fuses. Fuses are all there, so it is good to go. And I just bolted this down to the fuse holder, so this just comes off. There's enough slack in the wire where you can access the fuses, no problem. And I just wired up the yellow to power. That way, Ashley can control this from her phone. If she's in like a sketch parking lot or something, and needs to turn all her lights on strobe or something to get attention, she can do that. But if your car is gonna be sitting for extended period of times without running, you wanna wire the yellow switch to something that will only be on when your ignition is on, so that way you can only control the lights. Or you could put it on a little switch, which I may do for storage. That way you can just switch, disconnect the yellow, and essentially disconnect the unit because since it is wireless and it is Bluetooth and you can control it at any time from your phone, it will have a small pool, a small draw on your battery all the time, but I think they said it'll go like, you know, two or three weeks without, without having to worry about it. The controller unit itself is pretty basic, four switches on the four switch system and six on the six, obviously. Um, they're just on and off, but as you can see, completely wireless. And through the phone app, you can control the dimness and you can strobe it, but through the switch, it's just on and off. Very simple. Cool. For the roof rack, I opted for the Prinsu just because it's very low profile, which means won't affect fuel economy very much, if at all, and won't add too much wind noise. And Ashley's is honestly not gonna have stuff up here all that much. It comes with, I think, two or three extra crossbars that we didn't put in, maybe four extra crossbars actually. So we just have basically the bare minimum amount of crossbars on here. If we want to put stuff up there in a pinch, I did, it did include these little tie down brackets, which I put back here to kind of store uh, for later. Install was a little bit of a pain because you have to remove the factory rack, which isn't a big deal, but then you gotta use plus nuts, which I always hate using. Uh, and then this plus nut actually, I don't think you can tell, feels, feels pretty solid. I'm shaking the whole car here. This plus nut started spinning on me, so I'll probably uh, try and tighten or redo that one. But the plus nuts basically, you remove the factory rack, there are some holes already in there that the plus nuts fit through. You have to drill out this one a little deeper then you bolt it on and it's pretty straightforward after that, but not quite as straightforward as something like the Tacoma, which has factory threaded holes already. But I do like the look of it. I like the low profileness. And I always like having a nice solid rack up there for when you need to carry some stuff. Back here, we have Ashley's hiking slash get home bag and kind of her emergency tub because you know, that's how we do things here. And then not a whole lot going on inside. I think we got a little first aid kit, some weapons, things like that. So that's the RAV. I thought the color was really cool. Uh, this is again, we have the Tacoma and the Land Cruiser for really doing serious off-road overland duty. So this for the most part is just Ashley's daily driver that she wanted to soup up, modify a little bit and I think it looks really nice. All right guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Let Ashley know how she did, but be nice. Otherwise she may never talk in a video. Again, let us know what else you'd like to see. 
on the old RAV and we'll see if we can make it happen. Hope you're staying safe. And until next time, guys. You know what I say? <laughs> until next time, guys. Take care.